There were a couple weeks where I felt pretty good about myself. I thought, I'm a decent guy. I try my best to be inclusive and nice to others. I really could use some more white guilt in my life. Thankfully, Martin Scorsese heard my plea and was there to knock me back down a few pegs with Killers of the Flower Moon. A story in time so depressing, you have to wonder how anyone even finished filming this thing. Joking aside, I don't have white guilt. I know who I am as a person and how I try to carry myself. I also know that history is important and it is good to tell these types of stories, to get them out there so we don't repeat ourselves. Which, unfortunately, we often end up doing anyways. Martin Scorsese, I think it's fair to say, is an okay director. He's, he's made a few pretty awesome movies in the past. His entire catalog's pretty stellar. And here, thankfully, he does it again. I was actually chatting with M-Dog the other day. M-Dog is Martin Scorsese. We're, we're good friends. That's what I call him. And he said, Adam, what's the subscriber count at? I said, Martin, we're not even at 100,000 yet. And he said, he said, Adam, I got you, boo. Tell them Martin says subscribe to the channel. Scorsese's got you covered. So I'm, I'm relaying what he said in our conversation that we definitely had. Subscribe to the channel for Martin Scorsese, if not for me. At the tender age of 80, this man is still knocking out banger after banger hit. Now, I will say, The Irishman, very long. Uh, a little weird with the de-aging stuff going on, but there's a story that was interesting there and worth watching. The pacing and the length is a problem for me often, and I will say Irishman definitely felt that. And I will also say Killers of the Flower Moon could have desperately benefited from a nice little intermission. That's a small and really my only criticism about this film because Killers of the Flower Moon is brilliant. But it's definitely not a feel-good movie. It's not something that you're gonna wanna sit down with the family and watch and have a nice afternoon. Now this is something that's gonna hit you. It's gonna tear at your heart if you have one left. It's going to make you feel things and think about things and, and wonder how anyone in their right mind could act like the individuals do in this film. This is spoiler free. I'm briefly gonna talk about the plot. Very, very loosey-goosey. Pretty much what you can find on IMDB or a quick Google search. And before I do that, I wanna give a special shout out to Brian Davis who's producing this video. He's a supporter at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Highly encourage you to join if you like my content. There's a $1 tier, $5, $30. Whatever you wanna give is great. This isn't my full-time job. It's a passion project, it's a hobby. One that I really enjoy doing. At a three and a half hour runtime, you might be concerned that this movie's gonna be all over the place. It's gonna have some insane plot with twists and turns. No, it's very simple, straightforward, nothing confusing, and yet it maintains that three hour, three and a half hour runtime very effortlessly. There definitely was a point where I was feeling the runtime for sure, especially in the later half but it does pick back up again and it comes together. Uh, I'm not gonna say it's you know perfectly paced from beginning to end, and I do really think a break in the middle of this would have helped a ton. The film takes place in the 1920s. The Osage tribe comes into some Texas tea, some oil on their land, which of course brings lots of wealth. It allows them to get the things they need for their tribe to flourish, to thrive, to survive a little bit. The problem is they're also dealing with a lot of disease. Diabetes is running rampant through the area. Specifically to Molly, her mother, and her sisters. Molly's one of the main protagonists in this movie. She's played by Lily Gladstone, does a great job here. Sadly, a lot of the time she has to pretend to be ill, and that would be a tough role to play. I don't like being sick. I, I certainly wouldn't like pretending to be sick constantly, but that's what she has to deal with. Whenever there's money to be made, whenever there is a group of people to be taken advantage of, there's always a few assholes that will come along and do exactly that. Enter Robert De Niro as William Hale, a friend of the tribe who's been with them for a very long time. He's really planted his seeds in this area, made this house a home. He has meticulously planned out events that will allow him to carve his way into this tribe, bring along his own men, start marrying into the families in the hopes to secure their wealth. Because diabetes is a killer disease, especially if it's not being treated properly. So when these women die, where do their estates go? Well, typically to the husband, the next of kin, someone that's in line to take advantage of this. And that's where William really thrives. And his main accomplice in this film is Leonardo DiCaprio's Ernest Burkhart. 
a total dipshit who just got back from war and is ready to really sink his teeth in his next big adventure. Through pure will, ignorance, and a lack of a moral compass, Ernest is willing to do just about anything. And he often will in order to get what he wants at the end of the day. Because as Ernest says over and over again, I sure love money. Movies based on true stories always hit harder because you know somewhere down the line this happened, at least to an extent. Sure, things will be over-exaggerated, there'll be some pageantry, some characters won't have been here, liberties were taken, some things were changed, I don't know. But if I take it as just its own story, it's a, it's a very heartbreaking one. It's a tough film to watch. But it's an important one all the same. And you can definitely tell this was a passion project for Martin Scorsese, one he's wanted to make for a very long time. I'm glad he got the opportunity, and I'm very glad I got to go to the theaters and watch it. I can praise the boring stuff too if you want. It's got excellent cinematography. Okay, I mean, do we expect anything less from Scorsese? Great soundtrack. The drums constantly playing in the background really make you feel the tension, and it adds a little bit of energy to everything. It kind of has a Nolan vibe there. Obviously, Nolan's more the background music, but just the fact that it's constantly happening, it's keeping tempo with the film. Speaking of Nolan, this movie did remind me of Oppenheimer for a few different reasons. Another big one is the fact that just when you think the movie's starting to wind down, another arc is presented, or another huge actor will come out of the woodwork that you weren't expecting. I had no idea 40-50% of the actors were in this that showed up. Big names, too, and I was, I was impressed. I'm not going to give them away in case you didn't see it in the trailer. I don't remember them showing up in the trailer, but uh, this, this was a great movie. All around fantastic. Definitely will watch it again. It is long. Again, it's long, so you're gonna want to you're gonna want to pack a lunch, okay? Have something to, have something to chew on, have something to eat while you're watching. Get a soda, do what you do. Last thing I want to say, as someone who has the bladder of a seven month pregnant woman, I managed to hold it all the way through this movie. That's a testament to the the power of the storytelling and the acting and everything else, because I'm usually uh, at least once a movie. Even at an hour forty five, I'm out the door once and back. So I made it all the way through. Very good film. I want to thank you once again, Brian Davis, for supporting the channel and being an awesome producer on this video. I really appreciate it. Let me know in the comments if you saw it already. I'm, you know, review. This movie's been out for a few days now. Let me know. Leave a comment. Please like the video if you had a good time. Subscribe if you enjoyed what I'm doing here. I would love to have more people stick around. And hopefully, I'll see you next time. Take care.